Many years ago, I had a dream about opening a club which would only open its doors between the months of October and April. A warm, welcoming place with roaring log fires and cozy nooks where you could sit with your friends and chat about things that interest you. Well, I couldn't even begin to afford to open a club, so the dream died. But its passing is commemorated by this podcast, presenting for the winter months a series of cozy chats with friends old and new on topics of interest. Welcome to the October Club. I've always been fascinated by TV themes, ever since I was a little kid. The first single that I ever bought was the theme to the Japanese TV series Monkey. And the first LP that I ever bought was Jeff Love and his orchestra playing Star Wars and other space themes, which, although not all TV themes, did contain Doctor Who, Star Trek, Space 1999, and many more. Over the years, I've built up quite a collection of LP records, tapes, and CDs featuring all kinds of TV themes. They fascinate me. My wife complains that I sing along with TV themes, which I do all the time, because to me, they're quite often the most interesting part of the program. When I started the October Club, I knew that I wanted to discuss TV themes, and there could be nobody more qualified to talk about them with than Peter Falconer, who wrote the theme music to this podcast, but is also a very qualified musician and composer, a doctor of music, no less. Tonight we'll be discussing all manner of TV themes, from ones that were specially written for the show, to ones that were originally written for something else, but have become better known as a TV theme. Perhaps along the way we'll discover what makes a really good TV theme, and why some possibly don't quite fit the bill. Hello, Peter. Thank you for joining me in the October Club. Hello there, Paul. It's lovely to be here. Yeah, Peter and Paul. This is strange for me because my brother's called Peter as well. So, ah, oh, right. Well, so's my dad. All oh, right. <laughs> but, Do I... but you don't know him, so that's not so strange. <laughs> Do I call you Peter um... or Pete or Doctor Falconer? <laughs> Pete or uh, Pete or Peter, either's fine. Weirdly, I've been going more by Pete lately. Yeah. Um, because my co-host on the other podcast calls me Pete, yeah. and my wife calls me Pete, but I've yeah. always been Peter to, in my family. <laughs> so it's it's weird as I'm, I'm sort of yeah I've gained uh, I'm I'm losing losing letters from my name as well as hair from my head. Yeah, I get all <laughs> right. So yeah, we're going to discuss TV themes. Yeah, um, yeah. First of all, I'd, I'd like to. I'm curious to know what do you think was like the 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 golden era of the TV theme? What do you think was the best? Time? I honestly, I don't think there was one. All right, okay. Yeah, I I think there have been because when I when I was looking into this, I had an idea that there was a time when TV themes were composed specially for a TV show. Yeah, and then there was a time when they were um, like hit songs that were put mm -hmm. out, or maybe they were written as themes that could then with a, the aim to put it out. And then maybe there's another era where they just use a, a hit song from something else. And what I found was all of those things have yeah. been been there all through the history of TV themes. Right. Okay. There, I don't think that has been a golden era or a, or a bad era or anything like that. Yeah. There's always been good stuff. There's always been bad stuff. And there's always been the same... Yeah, different uh, uh, motivations behind writing them as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That 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 is interesting because you do tend to. I think you're right when you look back at them. You tend to think in in the '60s they used a lot of stock stuff, and then in the '70s yeah. they were they were writing more original stuff and that. And mm. uh, but it it is true what you're saying that um, a lot of things I think that possibly people don't realize are stock music yeah 
Yeah. The, yeah, there's an amazing number of yeah st stuff that was st yeah stock stock music is I just find absolutely fascinating the whole yeah. the old library yeah. music uh, system and we of course we still use have library music now mm -hmm. um, you know still uh, still a, a thriving industry for the for the lucky few people who are in it <laughs> yeah. it's a very difficult thing to get into yeah um, yeah it's, it's it's very interesting like I mean I think a lot of people know that like. Like the theme from Grange Hill, for yeah, example, that yeah. was that was Alan Hawkshaw track originally called Chicken yeah. Man. Yes, um, you know, and th there's you know things like um, oh, what was it like uh, Dave Allen Shaw? That's another yeah. that's another Alan Hawkshaw one. Studio sixty nine, um, Johnny Hawksworth, and um, uh, what's his bloody name? Keith um, Keith Mansfield, yeah. who did uh, like tennis and grandstand and a lot of yeah. other things. A lot of these were were, were yeah um, were, were stock tunes, stock you yeah. know library music, um, which then were much cheaper for the uh, for the production company because you didn't yeah. have to pay royalties on it. Um, but also, I mean, with a less kind of capitalist approach to it mm -hmm. it's also if you're looking for a theme song or something you don't you're producing a show you want to do it quickly you don't want to spend money having somebody compose a tune for us and you get yeah. it and you don't like it so yeah. this is a sort of way we listen through a few things and you know that are already there and and yeah. uh, and, and test them yeah um, some yeah. are uh, i mean some are kind of um absolutely attached to the uh the program they've become most famous for now, and they're like the mastermind theme, you know. I think it's called Approaching Menace. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. A, Approaching Menace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Approaching Menace is um, ah no, who who wrote that one? Um, I've got it. I've, I've basically I built a spreadsheet, <laughs> yeah. uh, and I've got there we go. Neil Richardson. He didn't really do uh, anything right. else of uh, of uh, of note. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's. Um, yeah, people just know that as the mastermind theme. And yeah. like when you see reissues of, I mean, even the old, um, um, you know, when they when they reissue the library music things in mm -hmm. in compilations now, when you know it's, there's a sort of weird underground interest in it yeah. to reissue them, and Chicken Man gets put out as theme from Grange Hill, yeah, or sometimes yeah. it's like called, I think it's called like College Boy or something like that. It's mm. also called, but yeah, because it's just what people know it as. Yeah, um, yeah, it's. Um, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's it's a funny old thing. Yeah, I didn't realise until fairly recently that the theme from Terry and June was a library piece. Oh, that doesn't that doesn't surprise me. I, I heard it on that... something else, and I thought, oh, it's the, it's the Terry and June theme, and then I sort of yeah <laughs> looked into it and realised it was a library piece. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But what's funny is you get this sort of sort of semantic thing so, uh, where, where you so semiotic thing where where you have once it's been associated with that yeah uh so once it's associated once you get have a tune it's associated with terry and june yes. everybody knows it as terry and june so as soon as you play it yeah it immediately sounds like suburban mundanity yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know and it doesn't matter what it was originally for but it, and it could evoke other things if you could hear it in isolation but just culturally we can't in the in the same way like the the twilight zone thing yeah yeah that ba 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 anybody who's even if you've never seen an episode of the twilight zone yeah you know that that means oh something's weird <laughs> yes yeah um because yeah. you hear people well, sometimes it kind of gets me a bit because i'm a bit of a twilight mm. zone fan it gets me mm. a bit that you hear some people like you see it evoking it that don't really know what it is, and they don't yeah. e even really know what the tune is. They're just going, da -da 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 -da, and you're thinking, no, you're just, <laughs> you're just doing a, a random yeah. selection of notes there. It's kind of... Yeah, but you see, so you're obviously, I know you're a big Twilight Zone fan. So what could you? Yeah. I, I I have some Twilight Zone theme tune. Yeah, uh, nuggets of of joy for you, which you probably already know. But the yeah. Twilight Zone theme that we all know and love wasn't the original. No, the uh, original I think was Bernard no, Herrmann. Yeah, Is that it right? was Bernard Herrmann. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was like credited for the actual for the more famous theme oh, for right. years. Yeah, and the poor guy, a guy called Marius Constant. I'm probably not yeah. pronouncing that right. Yeah. Um, 
he wasn't credited for, for years, mm-hmm. but it's actually it's two of his pieces. It's called uh, one's called Milieu Number no. Two and Etage yeah. Number no. Three. Oh, right. It's crammed together, um, and because that was done essentially as library music, the producer yeah. said, "I'll give you five hundred quid if you write a theme tune." Yeah, um, he didn't get credit and he didn't get money for years. Yeah, I've never um, really seen a. Um, I mean, perhaps there are bigger Twilight of Tone fans than me out there that will know this, but I've never really seen an explanation as to why they ditched the Bernard Herman one. Because obviously, I um, mean, they, they must have paid him, and he must have been, and he was a, a bigger name, you know. Yeah, but I think it was a, it was a combination of a couple of things. One was um, it, it is weird, and it is quite sort of there's not there's nothing that can grab you and yeah. like, you'll never hum you you can you can't hum it yeah it's very atmospheric yeah. which kind of works as underscore for a film mm-hmm. you can imagine it in a scene it you know within the tv show but as a yeah. theme tune itself it, it needs you need something that when you hear it you go oh twilight zone's on yeah and i, I think that's why it didn't work that and apparently the animation was they, they hated the animation for the opening scene. Yeah, looked a bit, yeah. bit, bit twee. So they, so they basically chucked the whole lot out by the second series. Yeah, yeah. It's better than the one that uh, there was. There was a series that came out in like two thousand and two. Oh or something right, like yeah. that. Uh, a, a sort of reboot, and Corn did the theme tune oh, for it. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, it's not good. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's not good. It's not good. But um, the the other. So, the Manhattan Transfer okay. released a version of the Twilight Zone theme with words. <laughs> All right, yeah, a disco disco version with words to it. Yeah, and it it it's, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look out for that. I think, mm. or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, a lot yeah. of uh, a lot of composers that went on to be very well known. Um, that started off on the, the Twilight Zone, you know, Jerry Goldsmith, and the well, way he's probably already yeah. well known then. But yeah. yeah, there's a there's a lot of people that yeah, you find that they're sort of working around the same, like in 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 the same thing. There's people who they'll do incidental music for a whole bunch of shows, yeah. and then maybe they'll they'll do a theme tune for one or two and then the guy who yeah. did the theme tune for that one will be doing incidental or another so it was just jobbing composers and jobbing yeah. arrangers yeah. just doing whatever and uh you know sometimes you're writing the themes sometimes you're writing the scores yeah it's uh yeah so you do you do see like a lot of the same names popping up yeah a lot there's yeah you know like in, in america it's like like mike post did a lot of things and yeah uh, over here we had like like Ron Granger and uh, Grainer, yeah. sorry, and um, Ronnie Hazelhurst did yeah. like ridiculous number of things. But even like even he didn't it. So Hazelhurst he did he did like Yes Minster and yeah. two Ronnies and some mothers to have him last the summer wine and blankety blank and Ivy and so all these things. But even yeah. he didn't hit every time because he did the theme tune for the first series of. Um, only fools and horses. All oh, right, yeah. And John Sullivan didn't like it, so he rewrote it. He did yeah. his own for the second series of the one that we know, yeah. which includes the because the the original one. It's like a sort of it feels like a Benny Hill type thing. It's like a sort <laughs> yeah. of mad madcap yeah. pub piano type thing. But the one we all know has has words to it. Not the yeah. Hunky Street one, but the the you know the words to it uh, mm-hmm. that um, that kind of explain. The the title explain the you know explain the name the name for behind it yeah so it makes a lot more sense yeah there seem to be uh, I mean it seems to me I mean you might disagree as a professional musician but there seem to me to be two sort of backgrounds that most of the composers in the sixties and seventies <coughs> came from they were either from a kind of jazz background or a kind mm. of avant garde background and the, there seem to be these two schools at work there i mean kind of the, but there was i think it's because when you had composers who'd been around for quite a long time yeah working in working in radio and doing you know and, and light entertainment and stuff like that and they were used yeah. to doing things that were pleasing to the ear yeah uh, that kind of thing you know and that wasn't going to offend anybody so they had one sort of sensibility yeah but then when you had 
younger people like you know like Alan Hawkshaw and uh, and Keith Mansfield coming up, and uh-huh. Brian Bennett's another one. They um, they would sometimes be doing that kind of thing, yeah. but they were also especially with like the library music law, they were sort of given a bit of license to just play around with stuff it's like you've got to do an album of stuff within a day and it's like oh christ what can we do and they just throw it throw you know because like um what's it called um uh rhubarb rhubarb and custard oh yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) that was a library piece oh right i didn't realize that yeah yeah um, I'll, I'll, see, I'll find who, uh, find who wrote it. That is, uh, oh, it's Johnny, Johnny Hawksworth. So Johnny, oh, right. Johnny Hawksworth, yeah. he, he also did, um, he did Man About the House. He did the, you know, the Thames TV logo. Oh, bum, yeah. Bum, 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 yeah. Really nice, tuneful thing. That's one of his. And he also did. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's all sorts of, yeah, weird things that, that I imagine producers would be like, you know, looking, you know, looking through library music yeah. and say, well, this, you know, we want something tuneful and we want something orchestral and we want yeah. something nice and sedate because this is what the thing's about. But also, let's just have a look at a couple of weird ones for the hell of it. Yeah. And there's some that you hear and you go, do you know what that works? And I don't know why. Yeah. But it does. Like, there's actually a, a, um, a sort of more modern one, um, Mad Men. Oh, yeah. So the theme to the theme tune of Mad Men, um, guy just uh, the the producer I can't remember who's uh, I can't remember his name, but he just heard this thing uh, this thing randomly, and it was uh, on on because it was it was used as bumper music for something else. Yeah, and it was actually a hip hop track by um, I want to say AC Alone. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, uh, it's a track called A Beautiful Mind. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a hip hop track. Yeah, um, right. But he just heard it and he thought, do you know what? That that would work yeah. for this 1960s yes. <laughs> Madison Avenue, you know, yeah. advertising firm. You don't know what, but it but it does. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's strange. I, I suppose we should talk talking about um, library music as well. We should talk yeah. about the BBC Radiophonic Workshop because. <laughs> Although they're inextricably linked now with Doctor Who in people's minds, yeah, I mean they did so much library stuff. I yeah, mean... oh man, uh, they, they, yeah, they, they did a, an impossible amount of stuff that, that yeah. crops up, like you know, all sorts of places. But yeah, ra- Radiophonic Workshop because they did because they were dealing with strange sounds and avant-garde noises yeah. and syn- synthesized sounds, things like that. Yeah, it's easy to think of them being just doing science fiction stuff. And I'm trying to think what else they did, because they did, um, cause obviously they did Doctor Who, yeah. particularly, you know, Delia Derbyshire. Um, I remember uh, that there's a an album I've got of um, BBC Radiophonic Workshop stuff, and there's yeah. a track on there, I think it's by John Baker, and I don't recognise most of it. Until mm. the very end of it, when it goes, and it's the end of John Craven's news round. <laughs> yes, and it's yeah, just that last that, little bit. Yeah, that's the that's the other little thing you get. Yeah, you get these just little bits, little yeah. snippets of things, and you don't realise that they are from whole songs. Yeah, um, but that is like just people with music kicking around, and you think that's yeah. it. That's the one. That's the bit that I want. There's a few of them that are like. Bits of much larger songs that have a life of their own, like like um, what's it called, Rainbow? The, you know, remember the yeah. old TV pro Rainbow? That's a whole like big yeah. sort of folk jazz type song. Which um, band wasn't? It wasn't Tramline. It was um, oh, they, they were called like Tramline or Freebird or something, yeah. something along that line. Um, Oh, it's going to kill me now. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to look it up. Telltale, that's it. <laughs> Telltale. But the thing I re- that I do remember about Telltale is that one of their members was Hugh Fraser, who yeah. played Captain Hastings in Poirot. <laughs> right. So Captain <laughs> Hastings from Poirot is singing on Rainbow. So was that was that written for the program, or was that a, a song before? I that? don't. No, I could. I did look this up, and I couldn't find out. I. Yeah. I, I I, I don't know if they had that already, um, yeah, or whether, or whether it was written before. There's quite a few of them where you're not sure, yeah, which way they they came round, yeah. Because there's all again, like I was saying at the beginning, there's um, I mean, we think of 
like you have the theme tune to a song and mm -hmm. then somebody decides let's stick words to it and make some money out of it like yeah. um east enders anyone could fall in love yeah. i mean the fact that that was a hit means that and i was anybody who says our oh, music was better in the old days well <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. um so it's it's always been that's always been a thing. I mean, they released the theme tune of Dixon of Doc Green as a <laughs> right. afterwards, because and, and, and as sheet music back then as well. I was like, oh, yeah. lovely, I like that. Let's play that at home. Um, I've heard. Have you ever heard? Whole... Sorry, go on. Sorry, I was just going to say, have you ever heard the um, the the record of um, Edward Woodward singing the theme from Callan with words? <laughs> No, I haven't. I haven't. But I could. Oh, you should look that one up. <laughs> I shall have to look at. That. But that's that's no. I mean that that's that's called that was called like Sonio Nostalgico or something <laughs> yes. like that. It was by an Italian guy. And it basically means you know nostalgic sound, nostalgic yes. song. And, yes. and you listen to it, you're like, yeah, that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. Good. But yeah. Oh, but but my favorite example of this. You. I mean, I bet. I'm sure you know this. Yeah. But do you know the words to the Star Trek theme? I have heard, I think I've heard a version sung by Nichelle Nichols. Um, but so, no, I, I'm not. I have it, <laughs> I have it here in this <laughs> book, of bumper theme. book of TV themes. So uh, let, me, let me just forward. So basically, what had happened was um, hold on a second. Starsky and Hutch, song from Max. <laughs> there we go. So Alexander Courage, he wrote the he wrote the tune yeah. to Star Trek. Yeah. And basically, when he got his royalty checks through, mm -hmm. um, he he got a lot less than he was expecting. He was like, "Hang on a second. So yeah. he phoned them up and he had a look and said, "Oh yeah, you got fifty percent split." Yeah. Because Gene Roddenberry wrote words to it <laughs> and sneaked it in when he registered it. Yeah. So no, you know, without the notes, without any like intention of it being recorded or released, yeah, he's wrote these words to it basically so he could get some money, <laughs> and uh, they're awful. It goes beyond. A, I won't, a, you know, for copyright reasons, I won't say. Yeah. Uh, but the words are beyond the rim of the starlight. My love is wandering in starflight. I know <laughs> he'll find in star clustered reaches love, strange love, a star woman teaches. <laughs> I know his journey ends never. His Star Trek will go on forever. <laughs> well, get tell him in while he wanders his story, his starry sea. Remember, remember me. <laughs> <laughs> Just That's just awful. Awful. <laughs> but I'd love to have heard Shatner do a version of it. Oh, yes. Oh, that that could have just about saved it. I think Shatner doing it. Too. Yeah, well, either that or the whole series would have been cancelled after about five <laughs> episodes. God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's, there's a few of those that had yeah words added afterwards. Bonanza. That's another one. Yeah. Bonanza. <laughs> like that. Johnny Cash did a version of that. Yeah, I seem to remember hearing that uh, the last producer of. Blake Seven wanted to have a, a version of the theme with words on the end of it, and high up at the BBC just went, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Blake Seven, that's a really weird theme, because yeah. I mean, I've, I've never seen Blake Seven. Yeah. And when, I, and when I heard the theme tune, I was like, this doesn't sound like a space thing. No, it's very sort of lounge jazz, sort of, yeah, almost, it isn't it? Yeah. It, it really is, but I mean, I guess... I mean, Star Trek is a bit loud, Jesse, but that's said by it's got the sort of theremin -y type thing. Yeah. I don't think it is a theremin, but it's. Ah, ah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, Blake Seven just sounds very different. Yeah. Mm. A Star Trek, I think, is problematic when they make the sort of films and things because it's very mm. much of its time. And I, yeah. I feel like they try and do big orchestral renditions of it in the. In the the most yeah. recent movies, and it doesn't really work because it's 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 really too much of its time, you know. Yeah, it is. It is definitely. It just doesn't. Yeah, it's that. Hey, kids, we're in space. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. Which now, like, yeah, we know about space now. It's two thousand twenty-four. Yeah. So it doesn't. Yeah, it, it doesn't quite quite work. It's nice to have those. 
Yeah, so, so it's better to have like nods to it. Like I, I think I remember you said in the Hitchhiker's Guide episode you did. Yeah. Um, the, the I can't remember the name of the composer, but he he was one of the guys from the Divine Comedy, and he has just just when the titles come up, he has the yeah. reference to Journey of the Sorcerer. Yeah. But it's not used anywhere else, so it's just yeah. a nice little nod, but without it. Mind that yeah. that might quite possibly be because the the Eagles are assholes about copyright, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> That's another one that I didn't. I think I said on that show I didn't realize at all that that was a that was anything yeah. other than the music for the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and then my dad had a re an Eagles record. Yeah, <laughs> and I just thought that's 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 Wait that a music. Minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the radio yeah. series, actually, interestingly, the radio series uses the Eagles track. It's not even a a cover of it. Well, it it is in the original radio series. It is, and then every yeah. release, si every release since the original broadcast, they've had to use a re-recorded version. Uh, yeah. Which I was I was listening to it the the radio series. Only recently, only like last week, because it popped into my head for some reason. I thought, oh, brilliant. Yeah. Give it a listen, because I still love it. And it always jazzed, because the first time I heard it, my dad had taped them off the radio. So I yeah. remember very clearly, you know, the the exact way that it goes, and the exact phrasing of it. And the, the re-release version, it's just slightly different. And it always yeah. irks me just a little bit. But yeah, yeah it's... Um, I've never um, never heard the re-release. Is it the um the Paddy Kingsland one from the TV series? That was a different. No, I don't think so. There's, there's been like four or five different recordings of it where they've oh, right. different really. It's it's all very messy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's it's just such a, a range of different different things that, mm -hmm. that that get used. And you think sometimes you think, does it work? Like, does it actually work, or do I just think it works because I'm familiar with it? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, you couldn't possibly imagine another another theme tune for this. It's like, well, yeah, I know it's because that's all I've been listening to for for twenty five years. Yeah, but 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 there are some, like I said, there's you know some that that change, like you know, like Twilight Zone changed their theme. Um, only fools and horses. Grandstand. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's another Keith Mansfield. Da -da 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 yeah. Da like that's of course that's Grandstand. But that's that was the third theme tune they used for that one. No, no I was going to say what was very strange is uh, a few years ago, one of these kind of random digital channels that shows a lot of copyright free stuff. You know, yeah. <laughs> stuff they've just got for free. You know, was right. showing some episodes of um, the Beverly Hillbillies. From the 1960s, oh, yeah. and that's that's mm. got a, a, a sort of fairly well known sort of hillbilly type song on the beginning of it, yeah. And that was replaced because obviously, um, the, the the actual episodes for some copyright loophole must have been copyright free for them to show for nothing, um, but the music wasn't. The music <laughs> so wasn't. They just, they just oh. replaced the, the the song with something else. <laughs> Very interesting. What did what did they replace it with? It's just a kind of random banjo sort of. Yeah, know, yeah. Oh, that's bluegrass. Bluegrass. Type. That'll do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that'll do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. It's uh, yeah because music and um, music and and and, and, and acting, you know, have always been. I mean, there's different unions. You know, you have musicians' union, you have equity. Yeah. So they're yeah. always under different rules, and even like uh, music. Musicians and singers were yeah. different, operated under different rules for a long time. Yeah. You know? So, tunes with vocals in them had had different copyright things and tunes with lyrics and all this. So it's it's all it's all a mess. At the end of the at the end of the day, nobody who makes the stuff is actually getting paid properly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's another rant. That's another rant. Although if you write it, you you know you've got more chance of getting money every time it's played, haven't you? Than than if you're yeah. a, <laughs> if you're the drummer in the band, you're not getting money then when that's played. Oh no 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 no! You've got your you've yeah you, you that that's your your stuff. That's it. Although I mean, like um, I I remember once uh, the guy who did I think the Coronation Street. Yeah. Um, Eric Spear. Eric Spear did. Yeah. He got he got paid six quid. <laughs> right. God. That's it. It's called. I remember. It's called Lancashire Blues. Oh dear! It's a pretty. It's a great theme tune. Yeah, it's great. Uh, but uh, yeah, you got six quid for that. <laughs> That's if you're under contract, I suppose, isn't it? If you're. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just just how it goes.
something I was interested in talking about mm-hmm. was um, the idea of TV themes kind of lasting beyond the program that they were on. Yeah. And still being kind of related to that program, even though that program is no longer being made or no longer being shown. It's something I remember a lot from being a kid that things like um, Z cars and Dixon of yeah. Doc Green, which I'd never seen, but the, the, the show, the themes would be referenced on something like the goodies or, or you know, um, the Benny Hill show or something. And I'd sort yeah. of say it to my parents, what's, what's that? And they'd say, oh, you know, it's, it's Z cars. And so I kind of knew those themes without ever having seen those programs. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a bit like it's a bit. Well, it's a bit like what we were saying about Twilight Zone. That, yeah. like, you know, people, kid, kids in the playground, no, 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 it means something weird's going on. In in yeah. the same way that if you're in the bath and somebody goes, dum, dum, <laughs> you know, there's a shark in the bath. You yeah. you might never have seen. You might not even have heard of Jaws, but you still know. It's one yeah. of those. I mean, that that's an actual meme, like a little little nugget of cultural information yeah. that's passed down through yeah. this little, yeah. little piece of music. It's um, almost like a sort of folk tradition, isn't it? That the, the you know these yeah. things are kind of passed down, even though you might not have seen the thing it relates to. Yeah, yeah exact, exactly. And they all, uh, yeah. I, I'm trying to think of some others that um, they get used. Well, I guess the X Files is another one. Yeah. Like you know, when they you know, if there's like some news item where they you know, you know, some oh somebody seen a flying saucer in <laughs> in Lincolnshire, and then of course they play the X Files theme over it, um, yeah. you know that, that that kind of thing, um, yeah, it, it's yeah. Um, so they yeah they they do kind of live on. Um, I have heard people say, um, sort of people younger than me, obviously, saying uh, yeah. that when Doctor Who returned. They knew the Doctor mm. Who theme, even though in their childhood it had never been on. Um, they'd, they'd not had a Doctor. Yeah, yeah, they were in those 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 that strange no man's land between yeah. between McCoy and Eccleston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, apologies to Paul McGann. Um, <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm guessing yeah. that was the thing that kind of did get referenced a lot during that period when it wasn't on television. Oh yeah, yeah, because because I mean there'll still have been. Doctor Who parodies in TV themes, yeah. the, uh, like yeah. sketch shows and stuff like that. Yeah, um, it's a bit like like the like the the music from Psycho. Yeah, gets in, yeah, you know, or even yeah, uh, it, it's. I, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm trying to think of some others, but um, yeah, uh, nothing's nothing's you... popping to mind because uh, because I'm an idiot. Uh, <laughs> I've just thought of another one that survived yeah. after it after it died, and that is the Peter Gunn theme. Oh yeah, yeah. By, by Hank Mancini, and of course, a lot of people, they don't realise it was from a TV show called Peter yeah. Gunn. Um, but then now, of course, you hear it and you think Blues Brothers yeah. straight away. Yeah, it's sort of like um, it's not quite the same thing because it was still used as another TV theme. But um, Man in the Suitcase, Man with the Suitcase, yeah. was used as the theme to TFI Friday. Yeah. Yeah, um, I like that. I like that theme. The ITC, yeah, oh, cracker, yeah. the ITC themes were all generally very good, of a very high standard. I can't think of any that yeah. are really bad. You know, Randon Hopkirk. The uh, yeah, the prisoner. Yeah, yeah. Ran- yeah, yeah, the prisoner was great. Randon Hopkirk deceased is just brilliant. It's it's that like, yeah. I always said that's that's the music I want when I'm walking into a room. <laughs> you know, um, but that one, that one was written. Uh, this is a name I'll need to look up. Hang on, yeah. um, that was written by, um, yeah, Edwin Astley. So he yeah. also did. He did the Saint and Danger Man, and he also did the Adventures of Robin Hood. All oh, right, yeah. but I had, I didn't, I didn't manage to look at whether he was. He did the Robin Hood, Robin yeah. Hood, riding through the. Glass. I don't know whether ah. Oh, so, a friend of a friend was getting married in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, told the organist that they wanted the music from Robin Hood, meaning yeah. the Brian Adams song that was oh. at number one for about a decade. <laughs> Doors open at the back of the church, and the <laughs> <laughs> organist pipes up with. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, she didn't take it very well. <laughs> well, I should have been more specific. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, 
Um, mentioning the, uh, the the Doctor Who theme, though, we should talk about yeah. that because it's uh, mm-hmm. it's the biggie, really, isn't it? It's the, it's the one I mean, it is a knows. great it's a yeah. great theme tune because it's I mean the melody is straight. I mean I don't think I don't know how much is Ron Grainer and how much is Delia Derbyshire. Yeah. There's more Adelia Derbyshire in it than she ever admitted. Yeah. Well, supposedly Ron but, Greener, when he heard it, said, did I write that? Yeah, yeah. And she said most of it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but um, but it's, I mean, it's essentially a piece. It's, it's great that she's finally getting getting recognition. But that yeah. it's a really interesting one because that's one that's with... Because with theme tunes should... Uh, the best theme tunes settle you into what you're about to see so when you yeah. hear mission impossible you know that you're in for an adventure yeah. and drama yeah. and all this sort of stuff and when you hear emmerdale farm you know it's going to be sort of pastoral but also some sort of uh, kind yeah. of tension going on you know um so yeah when you when you hear the doctor who theme you know that you're getting weird sci-fi yeah. adventure there's digga, 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 you know that's going yeah. on there's some strange stuff happening but then what they also do is they updated it with yeah. you know most if not all of the doctors got a new theme tune, a new variation of the theme tune yeah which I, I think what they did really cleverly was that they kept the both Ron Grainer's like melody yeah but they also kept the spirit of Delia Derbyshire's yeah. um realization of it even when it went all like, you know, with the like David Tennant got you know mm. really orchestral yeah. and all this sort of stuff, and big epic things and French yeah. horns going on, but it's still it was still recognizable, yeah. Um, and so it reflects that idea of it's Doctor Who, yeah, but it's a different Doctor, yeah, but it's also the same Doctor, yeah. which I think is a really clever way of referencing the whole ethos of the show, yeah, within the theme tune, yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, it's something that is seems to be open to endless interpretations. I mean, I wouldn't like to see mm. how many versions of it there are, but it's, you know. yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you can you can do all sorts of it. But the one thing that I think is a problem yeah. is that they get bigger every time. Yeah, uh, and it and it's very hard for it because when you if you were to do a suddenly very low key yeah. minimal kind of you know creepy weird you could dink it type of thing going on it might be awesome like yeah. in it's uh, in well awesome's not the right word but it might be brilliant you know in itself yeah. but on first listen when people have been used to you know dun, 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 yeah. big orchestra things and they hear this and it'll be oh oh is yeah. that it that's so it's very hard to go back. It, <laughs> yeah. To go, yeah, it's very hard for them to go to to go anywhere. They've got to keep it. Yeah, innovation in this case kind of means bigger, which yeah. is which is sometimes a, a shame. Yeah, but it's funny that I I don't think any of them are. People will always say, you know, which which ones are better or worse, yeah. or you know, every every year there'll be some people who go, oh yeah, it's. it's bigger and better than ever and yeah. that every year someone will say oh no that it's it just it just doesn't have it doesn't yeah. sound like that it's another there's always you know but i think it's um i remember when they, they changed the theme tune to quantum leap oh yeah yeah um which which that was before the x files came along that was that was my tea time yeah. program you know i loved it it was a guy called mike post he also did like um the A team and Magnum PI and Law yeah. and Order. He did loads of American ones, but Quantum Leap was like it was a weird kind of like elevator music yeah. for, for ages. Which I I really I don't know why I liked it. And they had this like saxophone thing, and then they sort of they rejigged it. Yeah, and it just didn't it didn't work for me but yeah. i don't know whether that's just because i loved the old the one old it's like one, no yeah. this is different the same with the bill oh, oh yeah i mean the bill that's a great because that is in a weird time signature it's yeah. quite a it's not a straightforward one two three yeah four. it's um there's all sorts of crazy things but yeah they, they redid that and like made it a bit more straightforward and they made yeah. it easier to follow time signature and new instruments and yeah, I, I, I was a bit like that with um, the theme from 
casualty, which was this is this. I don't. I see, it I was don't, originally this very synthesized piece by Ken Freeman, and they've made it oh, very right. orchestral now. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, because I, I I never watched. Casualty, and I don't know, but didn't does yeah. that start with a, a siren? And yeah, na, 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 na. yeah, it's a bit on point, um, isn't it? It's a bit, yeah, you're watching, <laughs> you're watching a hospital yeah. program, but again, why not? Why not? You know, and I bet they'll have looked at several theme tune possible yeah. theme tunes for that, all of which had some sort of siren motif in it, <laughs> yeah. but they, they, they chose that one because it's it is the obvious one to do, I guess, you know? yeah. Yeah, I mean, the bill, they got around that by just using an actual siren in the start of it, yeah. the car screeching <laughs> up before the music comes in. Which is actually your favourite of the versions of the Doctor Who theme? Is it the Delia Derbyshire original? I like the original Delia yeah. Derbyshire because it is just so... It's just so weird. And even now, it sounds like... It, it still sounds like the music of the future. Yeah. Even even now. It, there's some... It's, I think it's because... I you see I like mu a lot of uh, I, uh, I like music that's got like a you know a good beat like a strong drum I'm all about mm -hmm. you know drums and bass and a big strong thing which I re you know I really love that yeah but this doesn't have that it's got a rhythm it's got a pulse, yeah but it's wonky because nothing was like sequenced it was all done it was all done by you know by ear and by twisting knobs yeah. to a you know to a very imprecise and yeah. yet precise way and it, it was just amazing how she was able to do it it's just mind-boggling but because it is a very human thing like it, there's something slightly ah oh, i don't know it just gives me the creeps but in the best way because it is just ever so slightly wonky yeah i mean uh, on, on, on another that, yeah. Sorry, another podcast that I do, a Doctor Who one, we looked at sort mm. of um, all the versions of the theme. And what we yeah. what we kind of said about that was kind of, uh, and we all kind of agreed on this, is that, yes, it's a wonderful TV theme, but it is mm. legitimately art as well, isn't it? I mean, it, I mean the, it, it's a piece I mean, of the, art. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's a piece of art and it's a piece of science. Yeah. Which is which is quite an interesting thing for a science fiction TV show that it, yeah. you know another way that the TV theme like properly embodies the you know embodies yeah. the, the 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 show um there is a lot of I you see I I've I've kind of changed my my stance on a lot of these things when you think of you know what is good art and what is just yeah. like popcorn cookie cutter stuff and now i just think no it, it's all art it's all got its value it's all yeah. got good stuff it's highbrow lowbrow whatever it doesn't matter i think there's does it work well or not yeah. and also there there is like personal preference like i do not like tony hatch I don't like <laughs> I don't like his sports night thing. I don't like neighbours. I don't like love story. I don't like anything that he did with for what a bloody name, Petula Clark. Oh God. Yeah. I you know, I just don't <laughs> I, but but I know that I am inherently prejudiced against Tony Hatch. <laughs> <laughs> and his sound and you know, he does have a particular sound, so I hear it and I go, ah, God, no, it's not even. <laughs> but so so there's certain things that I, I I find it I can find it a little bit hard to be objective about Tony <laughs> yeah. Hatch. But other than leaving Tony Hatch aside, <laughs> most things you know they they're chosen for a reason. Yeah. And I think and I think what what is interesting that when something that's a little bit different now is that now you have something's got to be a hit straight away, otherwise it gets yeah. cancelled. Uh, especially with the Netflix model of yeah. things, where even you know, sometimes Netflix, even if it is a hit, it gets cancelled, and no bugger knows why. Yeah. Um, but the way that they did, like I say, they did you know two or three different theme tunes for Grandstand before they found one that stuck. Yeah. They did a couple with um, you know Only Fools and Horses before, and then you know Twilight Zone. Um, so they'll still try things before it, you know, works. Because I think there was just a little bit more leeway then, and yeah. probably a little bit more money for program making. Yeah. Because the, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, when you when you think about it, just going back to the Radiophonic Workshop, mm. they didn't have to spend that much time and money to record a, a piece of music like the Doctor Who theme. They could have no. just said, you know, um, got, get get Ron <clears throat> Grainer's music, get the, the you know the yeah. BBC session orchestra, 
to knock it out yeah. in five minutes. They didn't have to go to yeah. the expense of getting this experimental piece done, but they did. So, you know. Yeah. But I, I think there's, I think for a long time, there was probably a, a sort of schism in the BBC. I can yeah. imagine between people who took TV seriously yeah. and people and people who didn't. Yeah. And so there were probably a lot of people away a lot of times where you could get away with a lot more because nobody was really looking over your shoulder and it's like, oh, it doesn't matter because we're going to wipe the tapes anyway, who cares? Yeah. And then there were other people who were invested in it and like saying, let's do something interesting and exciting yeah. with this new medium. So yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot of that. I I think there's, um, I mean, what, what to you makes a good theme? What do you think a good TV theme should do? Um, I think there should be, a recognition factor you should be able to turn on you should be able to be in the kitchen making a cup yeah. of tea and it comes on and you hear the music yeah. and you go oh that's that program yeah. And, yeah. and so you go in and watch it it, it that i yeah. think that's an important thing it should yes. sort of reflect the program mm. um like you were saying it, in a way that quantum leap theme isn't yeah. a great theme in the sense that it doesn't really no. <laughs> represent the program. It, um... No, not <laughs> at all, but I love it for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a great piece yeah. of music, but not necessarily a great theme for a science fiction show. But um, yeah, and yet, yet they, they kept it for ages. And, and yeah. They, and like you're saying, the same for Blake 7 yeah. as well. It doesn't really say that program. So. Yeah. It's, it's it's just nuts. But then, like, like Grange, Grange Hill's an interesting one because yeah. cause Chicken Man, you think of, you know, it sounds like cheeky school kids. Yeah. But then, like, they replaced it in, like, early 90s. Yeah. And they had a different, they had a different theme tune came in that was done by a guy called Peter Moss. And that was like, dum, ba, bum, bum, ba, du, bum, ba, dum, yeah. bum, bum, du, bum. And it had, like, synths and, like, you know, drum machines and all this sort of stuff. And of course, a lot of older viewers were like, what's this rubbish? Yeah. But then there's a lot of people, you know, sort of, uh, you know, who are a lot long, younger, who are like, yeah, that sounds like Grange Hill. That's, that's great. Yeah. Um, and, and it does fit. It still sounds like it. Yeah. I think it sort of, ref it reflects how school children and how like teenagers, especially yeah. were like the sort of demographic, I think it reflects how they changed because by the nineties, teenagers were starting to let's be more grown up, you know, let's yeah. be more adult. Whereas I think earlier it was like, no, you're still children, drink your milk, wear your shorts. Yeah. Um, and then when you, yeah, when, when you go even, even earlier, I know it's aimed at an even old, like earlier, like a younger, um, demographic but like if you look at the theme tune to like, like Andy Pandy yeah or you know or something like that it really is like a nursery rhyme type thing yeah but then when you listen to the theme tune to like Thundercats or something like that <laughs> it's like whoa what the hell's this well there, there seems to be uh, we mentioned uh, Rainbow before there seems to be this point yeah. in the 70s where mm. um Oh, at the late sixties, I would have said, where they go from the kind of jaunty theme tunes to actually mm. having something that's approaching pop music, and you get things like the rainbow theme and the, the theme to Magpie. I don't know if you remember Magpie and and things like that. And and then it's it's pop music, you know. They, yeah, they were embracing that kids like pop music. Um, I, yeah, I think that's a re yeah, it's a really interesting point, and yeah, because. Yeah, this this idea that yeah, and there were things that you could sing along with, and then you know yeah. release on a forty five and buy. Yeah. Nobody was buying the Jack and Ori theme. No. Um, <laughs> you know, um, do you know but, what? Yeah, the, so, do you know what the first um, single record that I bought ever was? Oh, go on. It was the theme song to Monkey. The. Japanese, the, uh, the Japanese, yeah, well, the I Japanese. Don't, I don't even know the feature, but it was it was trying, by a, a, right, a Japanese band called, and I, I'm definitely going to pronounce this wrong, but Go Diego or something. Um, oh, brilliant! Um, and that was the first, <laughs> that was the first single I ever bought. That's fantastic. 
<laughs> well, do you know, funnily enough, the first single I ever bought, which was, because I didn't, I didn't buy me, I got music, you know, for Christmas and birthdays, yeah. which I got quite often, and then of course, you know, I just listened to me dad's music, and listened to yeah. the first thing I bought with my own pocket money wasn't until 1990, and yeah. I bought, and it was Turtle Power by Partners <laughs> in Crime, and it, but it's interesting that it wasn't just a song that I liked, it was also from a film. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's quite interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I'd say, uh, oh, Mon- there you go, Monkey Magic, a song by yeah. Japanese rock band, um, Go Diego. Yeah. I shall check that out. <laughs> Brilliant. There's an inter- it's an interesting, sorry, just a little, like, side change. There's an interesting um, trend yeah. that, that I noticed with with tv dramas that you'd have two theme tunes yeah so you'd have the opening theme tune would be and this is especially for more sort of like i guess action oriented yeah you'd have the like exciting action type thing yeah and then the closing credits you'd have something more introspective it's like let's think about what just happened that makes me think of the sweeney (laughs) The Sweeney is, I mean, that is one of the best theme tunes ever. It's brilliant. And then at the end, you've got this like piano and oboe. And it's a really melancholy, sad version of it. Yeah, I'm guessing the thinking there was it's going to quite often end with somebody getting shot or uh, somebody dying or whatever. So we can't have this kind of big theme at the end of it we've got to have something yeah exactly yeah the villain gets caught but at what cost <laughs> yeah that yeah that kind of thing whereas yeah i mean because i know that I, I never watched it but i know with east enders sometimes when somebody's dead they don't just you know they're <laughs> yeah. both, like barbara windsor's funeral doof 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 <laughs> doof, 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 doof you know they, <laughs> yeah. they'll have a you know some sort of more tasteful appropriate thing yeah right? but yeah but but there's loads of those that have like opening things and closing things so like um what was it called incredible hulk oh yeah uh, the, the lonely man or something as really. he's walking off into the distance as he's wa- the, yeah exactly the piano music. The, yeah this terrible tortured man but i mean again maybe that is just let's get two theme songs out of it and sell twice as many records yeah Who knows? yeah but i think i like the idea that it is the sort of you know let's get going here comes the uh here comes the tv show and then there's the and what have we learned <laughs> that that yeah. version of it at the end i suppose you've got jerry anderson stingray as well haven't you which has got the big action theme up, up yeah. the front and, and then the... the kind of love theme at the Marina, end sort of thing <laughs> yeah i mean that was that was barry gray wasn't he, he wrote all yeah. of jerry anderson's yeah. stuff uh yeah i always like i mean yeah, I, I I I always loved Captain Scarlet. Yeah, because because yeah. that was that was being repeated when my little brother and I, I think I was doing like GCSEs or something. Yeah, and, and my brother was like nine or ten, and uh, and so it'd be repeated on a Saturday morning. So we'd both watch that that and <laughs> Tintin, which Tintin the theme tune of Tintin when they when they did that that's done by Ray Parker Junior. Oh, All right, who did Ghostbusters? Yeah. <laughs> Is there, so there's all sorts of like people just popping up, yeah, all over the yeah. It's uh, that you that you don't expect. <laughs> so I'll, I'll ask you, you know, if you if you if somebody came to you as a composer yeah. and said, yeah. write a theme tune for this TV show, what's the first thing you would look at? You know, would would you be wanting to see the the show, the finished show, or would you? What would I'd want to know what it, what's it about. You know, <laughs> yeah. that, that's the that's the, that's the first thing. What what's it about? What's the overall thing before you get and you know what what sort of mood would you describe it as? That kind of thing. Yeah. What's what's the overarching theme of it? Yeah. And is is it a comedy? Is it a drama? Is it yeah? You know whatever. Um, and 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 go from go from there. But um, I think it's. Like uh, what's he what's he called again? Um, uh, oh my brain! Uh, uh, Ronnie Hazelhurst. That's it. Yeah. So Ronnie Hazelhurst would do an interesting thing. He would like you. So he did the thing to "Are You Being Served?" Yeah. And he used cash registers. He got samples yeah. of cash registers and yeah. stuff like that. So which, which I think nowadays is a bit on the 
It's a yeah. bit on the nose, whereas back there your TV audiences are going, oh, isn't that clever? He uses yeah. And then there's all these Pink Floyd fans going, oh, actually, we've done that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, you, and also, where's it set? I think that's yeah. really interesting, because, like, there's a... Um, so Hetty Wainthrop investigates. It's a um, concert band composer called Nigel Hess did it. Yeah. And that is, you've got a brass band sound. Yeah. And it's very, it's very easy. It's very comforting, um, but you've got this like triumphant sort of thing. So it sounds like, yeah, Yorkshire, you know, yes. and it sounds like, and it sounds gentle because yeah. it's not like it's not a hard hitting adventure, you know. Hetty Wainthrop's not going in there smashing up a yeah. heroin ring or anything like that, you know. He's, he's, she's, you know. This, yeah. Um. <laughs> So it's, well, I'd like to see that version, you know, going in with a, you know, the Beretta in a, <laughs> in, in a surgical stockings. Um, so yeah, yeah. So, so it's the, the set, like, where is it set is another important thing. You know, exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, so that's, yeah, that's, that's basically, it's, it's just got to, I've, yeah, that, I mean, it's, it's a really boring answer, but basically yeah. it's just gotta be, it's yeah. gotta reflect. The ethos yeah. and the the and the um, yeah. and, and the style and the set you've you've got to be basically the theme tune gets you ready for what yeah. you're about to see. Yeah. So like, you know, you you hear so, and also it drags people in. Yeah. If people are like flicking around channels or something. And they like westerns. Yeah. And they hear ding 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 ding. They're like, yeah. oh, this sounds like a western. I'll give this a watch. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, sure enough, it is. But if the theme from Bonanza was used for, I don't know, if it were used for Upstairs Downstairs, <laughs> yeah. I, I suppose, yeah, I suppose but, you've got that thing as well of having to, of well, not having to use, but using mm. sort of certain instruments for certain to reflect certain things. You used to always get yeah. that thing of comedy series would quite often have a very sort of trombone-y sort of. <laughs> you know, yeah, like this is a um, comedy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, old old Ned. That's another Ron Grainer one, which is yeah. Step to One Son. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's yeah, that is yeah, that's or is that porridge? <laughs> oh no, I'm thinking I've got porridge wrong, but yeah, porridge. Yeah. But yeah, but that's got like the like the xylophone and the banjo thing, and it's like a rickety horse going yeah. down. Yeah, and you've got, and it's the sound of a rag and bone cart. Yeah, um, and then yeah, like you said, the uh, Beverly Hillbillies thing. Yeah, they couldn't use the same music, but they'll have used the same instruments. Yeah, the because, banjo and the yeah, yeah. We we have that, you know, that semiotic connection with banjo equals hillbilly, theremin <laughs> equals flying saucer. Yeah. yeah, you know, um, that that kind of thing. You know, um discord and so they or like the theme tune to uh so it's not even a theme tune it's more of an ident but like lost oh, that yeah. was just like two notes going in opposite directions just yeah. one going and the other one going yeah and that was really clever because it's just the idea of, of you know what's called a, gl a glissando is that yeah. there's no fixed there's no fixed pitch you don't know where you are yeah. and then there's two of them going in opposite directions so it's even more disorientated so that straight away makes you think whoa what's going on yeah i think it's interesting that they had like um yeah like yeah this, i mean there's so many of those what are now are a little bit cheesy 70s because it goes like like you know like rising damp and yeah and and yeah, porridge and are oh, you being served and, and all of them that have actually are you being served is another bit of a weirdo because that's got this like funk thing going yeah on. and that'll be like Brian I bet that's Brian Bennett who was on drums and like you know the same guys that were on a lot of those yeah. library things I like um, some others do have them because isn't that supposedly it's it's Morse code isn't it yeah it's, it's the name no, of the show in Morse code. That is the name of the show in Morse Code. Now, yeah, interesting though, because that's uh, yeah. There's, so there's that, and um, Mission Impossible is yeah. MI. Um, oh, yeah, um, Inspector Morse. That's yeah. the, you know Barrington. Was it Barrington Furlong or something like that? Is, is yeah. it, I can never pronounce it. But that's Morse in Morse yeah. Code and stuff like that. So that's 
as a composer, that's an interesting trick to get started. Yeah. You think, well, what's it? So, like, you know, Hazel is like, oh, what can I do? I'll just get a rhythm with these cash machines going, and that'll give me some ideas. Yeah. And then so I say, what, what happens if I just put it into Morse code? What sort of rhythm does that give me? And then I'll write around that. Yeah. And sometimes that's a springboard, and then you write something on top of it and then ditch the original yeah. Morse code. You yeah. know, but sometimes it becomes a, an integral part of it. Yeah, didn't they? Uh, I can't remember the composer's name now, but the guy who used to write the music for a lot of the Hammer films, didn't he say that he just mm. used to take the, the name of the character and go, Dracula! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> well, I remember somebody <laughs> said it was, if I was Stuart McCoy, he said the best theme tunes are the ones where you can sing. <laughs> yeah. Sing the wizard, the Sweeney, yeah. Yeah. the Sweeney, and then the, the others, nine, nine, nine. That's another <laughs> one. That, they, but um, but then I, because I remember listening to that, and he and he started singing uh, "March of the Day," "March of the Day," "March of the Day," and then somebody wrote in said you were singing the theme tune to Grandstand. That wasn't "March of the Day." Like, <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, that is an interesting. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting approach, yeah. Just put the words to the music and see what comes out of it. Sometimes yeah. it works, sometimes it doesn't. Well, I think I'm going to have to wrap up a bit now because we're at uh, the little clock in the corner of my screen is showing we only have <laughs> four minutes left. So uh, thank you for joining me again, Peter. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to your club. Yes. And uh, uh, with a cup of tea and uh, uh, an armchair by the fire. It's been lovely. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Next time, in the final episode of this series of the October Club, I'll be discussing Star Trek Law with Adam Manning. You've been listening to the October Club. That was TV Themes, presented by Paul Ferry with special guest Peter Falconer. The theme music was written by Peter Falconer, and the episode was produced and edited by Paul Ferry.